Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to the Feel Good Factor. I'm Susmita Veganosaurus, and I'm so glad you could join me here today. Hey, everyone! Welcome back. I have a very good friend of mine, Adam Shibley, on the show today. Last year, sometime you would have heard him uh, doing an intro to the podcast, and uh, he's the host of Million Pound Mission and also Podcasting Business School. I got to know him through Podcasting Business School through his podcast. I I was uh, actually interviewed for an audit session on his show, and it helped me a lot. And he's the influence, the person behind you know me doing my courses online, like the ignite your joy the vegan immersion experience i learned how to build these courses uh, from adam i was totally inspired by him so i thought okay his he's got this awesome motivational energy and i wanted to bring it to all of you and i thought beginning of the new year is a great time for motivation right any time is but yeah beginning of of a year more so so here we go hi adam veganosaurus i am very excited to be here uh, i i love your energy as well like whenever i listen to your show or listen to you uh, post things on uh, instagram it's like you're very positive. I love your outlook on life. I love how driven you are to help people. So I'm ready to step up and, and lend some of my energy to your audience here. And I think we're going to create some podcasting magic. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for the magic. So Adam, can you introduce yourself? Tell everybody a little bit about you. Yeah, my name is Adam Shibley, and in the podcasting world, I'm known as the PhD, the Previously Heavy Dude, and that is a title that I earned because uh, back in 2007, I weighed 327 pounds, and I uh, kind of ran into that life rock bottom moment that I'm sure we'll we'll get into at some point, but I, I went on my own health journey, my own health quest, and I ended up losing over 100 pounds in about five years, so it didn't happen uh, in like 12 weeks or anything like that. Like, you know, I, I went on a five-year health journey. I ended up losing over a hundred pounds, but I also was able to create a business around it where I started helping other people in my community here in my local town in Bloomington, Indiana, in the United States. And, uh, we ended up helping our, uh, hometown lose 35,000 pounds and, uh, over that same five year span, and then I created a business and I, out of that business sprung the podcast, the million pound mission. And, mm -hmm. and then you know, all the podcasting adventures ensued from there. So it, it all started with my own health journey and my, my motivation to create a movement and to help as many people as possible. And then all these amazing opportunities kind of sprung forth out of that. That's so awesome. And it really goes to show, you know, when you take care of yourself and, you know, focus on self care, uh, it actually opens up a whole new world to you. And I love that you used what you learned. And then you took it out, uh, you know, you, you, you just took it and try to help other people with it. And you have been helping other people with the knowledge that you gained. Uh, so what were you doing before you started the business with the Million Pound Mission? Uh, before I actually went to college, I went to Indiana University with an interest in being like a, a sports strength training coach. So working with athletes, helping them perform better and things like that. So I was in the health space per se, mm -hmm. but I, I just wasn't living a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> I, I was learning, <laughs> you know, and when it comes to like st building strength and things like that, that doesn't always walk go hand in hand with healthy eating and things like that. So um, that's that's where I, I diverted quite a bit. But I was uh, you know I was working with a lot of athletes out of once I graduated college and working with sports teams, football teams, uh, volleyball teams, local athletes, uh, athletes trying to earn like college scholarships and things like that. And that was that was going okay, but. Again, I just kind of ran into that moment where I was like, okay, my own mission isn't really aligned with that anymore. Um, and that's when I flipped the switch. I ended up letting go of all my athlete clients and go, I'm focusing only on helping 
you know, moms and dads and, you know, young individuals get healthy and reclaim control over their health. That's all I want to do. And that's all I want to focus on. And that's uh, where I made that transition uh, back in, you know, 2007, 2008. Wow. Okay. That's like 12 years now. And that's a long journey. You know, you, I, you were saying you helped your community your local community people lose a lot of weight too and get healthy. And, you know, I, what I like is it's not about losing weight in terms of vanity, but it's for health and your focus is so much on health. And I know that it's not just about food. It's also about the, the mind body connection and motivating them to stay healthy. So what are some of the motivation techniques that you use or what kind of suggestions do you give uh, people to help them stick to the course of getting healthy? Well, that's a great question. I think that's something that's really important to address, especially at the beginning of a new year. And one of my challenges and one of my things that I ask my clients, my audience to think about is that we have to get you from a point of motivation to a point of inspiration, because I, I define those two things differently. When I define somebody as being motivated, that's external. That's some. That's your doctor telling you that your cholesterol levels are at a certain level where you're at risk for heart attack or stroke or heart disease. So you you feel like you have to do something about it. That's motivation. That's external. Inspiration is more about you wanting to do this. So you have that internal drive that says, I do want to wake up early and exercise. I do want to spend time on the weekend, grocery shopping for healthy food and meal prepping. So it, moving from feeling like you have to do this to you want to do this, that's an important part of this journey. And if you're still sitting in that, I have to externally motivated zone, you're not going to last very long along your journey if you don't make that transition. So the way we do that is we level up our why behind the initial goal. So you've got your doctor telling you this or that, or your spouse or your friends, and then you have to go, okay, well, why is this important to me? And then why am I going to wake up early? Why am I going to eat healthy? Why am I going to spend time on the weekend thinking about this and, and prepping it? Why am I going to avoid certain social situations? And as long as your why is larger than the combined sum of all of the why nots put together, then you are going to have success and you'll have success long term. And that applies to any goal, whether it's health, relationship, business, finance, whatever. The, the why line, that, that side of the equation just has to be larger because all the why nots happen at once. And you have to imagine like, OK, if you know my I do have relationship issues or my job schedule changes or my workout buddy moves out of town, like all those things happen at once. Is my why still big enough where I'll keep going anyway? So I think those are two important things to address at any point, but especially at the beginning of the year of, am I feeling motivated or am I feeling inspired? Which, which side of that line am I on right now? And then where am I at with my why versus my why nots? Wow. That's, you know, I never thought of it that way. I, I just always use the terms in tandem saying motivation and inspiration, but when you split it that way, it explains a lot. And it's so true that, until something comes from within that, okay, whatever happens, this is what I want to do. This is my purpose. This is my goal. You can't uh, stick to it. And this is great that you divided this up and, and broke it down this way for uh, everybody. What was uh, your inspiration to, first of all, become healthy? I mean, there are plenty of people who are 300 plus pounds, but they are not inspired to go healthy or they may try and give up or they may slip up, use excuses. So what was your inspiration that kept you going? And also your inspiration to turn this into a business and help people with their own health journeys? Well, I think initially, to me, it was a, my inspiration to start the whole process was that I felt out of control of my own life. And I was like, man, this, this doesn't make sense. I feel like I'm you know, putting in work in a career that I don't enjoy anymore. That's not al aligned with my personal values. I, I'm not in a good space with my self-confidence. Uh, my finances were terrible. I had a ton of debt, credit card issues, things like that, food addiction issues, all this. 
I just felt out of control. And I felt like I was trying to drive my car without being able to grab on to the steering wheel. I'm just pushing my, my foot on the gas pedal as hard as I can and trying to get, <laughs> get somewhere fast, but I'm not in control of where I'm going. So that, that really motivated me. And I was like, I just want to feel like I'm back in control again. And that's where I, I've got a process that I, I call my, I teach my students and my clients that is, is called a lifestyle rehabilitation statement. It's a series of affirmations and there's a process behind it. And that's why I started diving into that sort of material, you know, personal growth material, affirmations. And that's, that gave me the daily focus and the juice to execute and implement and take action every single day. And that's what kept me going through this. And then once I started getting that momentum and realizing that, okay, I can do this. I can show other people how to do it too. This is what I'm passionate about. I can show others uh, what my experience has been so that they can shorten the learning curve. And this is a, a pattern or a system that I've used several times in my life to create businesses. And I think more, pe more people could, you know, dip their toe in the, the side hustle or the entrepreneurial world with this formula where you go, okay, what, what life experiences have you had? You know, what are the, the good things? What are the not so good things about it? Can you compartmentalize that or package it into some sort of a system or coaching or podcast or book and share those experiences to help people that were you six months ago or 10 years ago or whatever that time span has been? And how can you help them shorten the learning curve? I've done that with my health business, with uh, starting my gym, with my podcasting, and then, you know, with pod getting into the podcast coaching space where now I, I've, you know, I've been podcasting for five years, over 500 plus episodes with all my different shows. And I go, okay, you know, I've, I've gone on this journey. I can help podcasters shorten their learning curve so that they can, you know, have more downloads sooner than I did, avoid certain mistakes that I made. Uh, you know, create a business, go full time, whatever. I can help them shorten that learning curve. So it's the same philosophy. It's the same system of experience. And then go back, show others how to shorten that uh, that learning learning curve, or get more efficient with their own experience. And that's something that I, I feel like a lot of people could duplicate. Yeah, you know, when you're speaking about this, I realize that you have a lot of very very interesting business ideas and. I, I like the system of, okay, know something, teach it. But then you clearly love teaching and you're very good at it because whenever I have done your courses, I've seen that they're very simple, very easy to understand. You never overcomplicate things. Like it's very clear that you, you, you don't want to just put a course out there. You want whoever it is to actually learn and you really simplify things for everybody. Now, if somebody is not very... Uh, good at teaching or if they don't quite know where to begin or how to go about it, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I think the first key thing is you have to be passionate about whatever your idea is. And that's, I always go and, and put extra attention where my, where my current level of passion is. And in the world that we live in, I feel like if you are passionate about what you're doing, you'll attract the right people into your life. Like those relationships will happen. It's just that yeah. like the law of attraction, that, that magnetism, you're going to draw those people in. And that's why people like, like you and I are connected because, you know, I, you know, put, put a certain energy level out there. You respond to that. We connect, we're friends. We're like, Oh, we love talking to each other and collaborating. So, um, mm -hmm. I feel like if you can lead with passion and energy and with a mindset of serving other people, good ideas will formulate out of that and your ability to teach will level up as well. Like I am in no way like where I am now with my speaking and communicating ability, my, my, my course and building and teaching ability 10 years ago, not even close to where I, it's 10 years of experience, you know, but you know, I, I'm putting in my reps every single day. It's like trying to get stronger on like a, a bench press or something. Like if you never do that exercise, you're not going to get stronger. So I put in my reps every opportunity uh, I get to be on someone else's show and podcast. I, I say yes. Anytime uh, I get to speak on a stage or a virtual stage, I say yes. And I really think about the craft. And I think about how can I communicate effectively? And one of the things that I obsess over is giving people 
like actionable steps, things, something they can implement and go, yes, I just got better from doing that thing. Whether I'm teaching podcasters how to use Instagram or teaching, you know, nutritional principles or like fasting principles or weight loss principles. Like I give people something anytime I get in front of someone on a stage or a virtual format, like we are today, I want people to go, yeah, I can do step one, step two, step three. I, I got results from those. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into Adam's world and see what else he has to offer. And I think if you can, again, come with that mindset of adding value, serving, letting people borrow your energy until they build up a little bit of their own and then giving them direct implementable steps so that you stand out. That's why I stand out on a stage. I have, I, every time I get up and speak at like PodFest, people, I just dive right into action steps. I'm like, I'm not going to give you theory. I'm not going to talk about why mm -hmm. you should be podcasting or like why podcasting is great or 10 years of my backstory. I'm just going to go, I've got six steps to X, Y, Z let's go. <laughs> and, and I've got 30 <laughs> minutes and I just give them all the things and they're furiously taking notes and like, they're not used to that. So you stand out. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my philosophy. That's great. And yeah, I'm sure, you know, if people break it down to implementation, even those who are not so passionate about teaching as such, they don't have to be passionate about teaching as long as they're passionate about what they're teaching, right? So <laughs> this is a great, uh, this, this is a great idea thinking about, okay, how to help people implement, not just teach or put your knowledge out there, but how to help them actually use that knowledge in their life. And that's really, really great. What about, you know, again, it comes down to the business thing, the, the whole idea of building businesses, what you were saying, you know, putting in the reps. Um, do you have advice for people to build their side hustle? Like what kind of dedication, what kind of planning, what do you think would be required? Because uh, uh, there are two things. One is, yes, people may not have any ideas and then yes you will have to figure out to you know how to get some ideas and work on that but there is the other problem where some of us have way too many ideas <laughs> and we want to do everything right like <laughs> i want this cause this cause this cause that whatever um so how do you how do people you know make sure to you know Stay on track, get things done versus uh, getting carried away into different ideas and, you know, just thinking too much. Well, the, you are on fire with amazing questions today. Uh, this, <laughs> I, lo I love this topic because I feel like I can give your audience a couple things to think about that will save them a lot of time, money, and frustration. Uh, and again, this is where I come back with implementation steps. Like if you all listening in can just think about what I'm about to tell you, it could really help quite a bit. So the first thing is just to, to recap what I said earlier, like you have to think about your life experiences. What have you gone through that could serve other people? And what are you passionate about currently? Where, where's the intersection of where, what you have gone through that can impact other people in a positive way and what you are currently passionate about. Maybe you went through a terrible divorce and you had a relationship that was like really a, like abusive or violent or whatever, and you've come out of that and now you're remarried and you're in a great relationship. That is an experience that if you're very passionate about that now, like getting out of the bad relationship, escaping that, finding your true soulmate or whatever, experience that is like you can teach other people how to do that if you're passionate about it so once you find that passion point uh, well we could uh, give another great example our, our our mutual friend tamar like tamar mm. has been through severe addiction and alcoholism she's been through a crazy experience with that that was traumatic she's on the other side of it and she's a very successful entrepreneur now and now she's teaching you know, recovering addicts, how to become entrepreneurs. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's a real life example. So shout out to Tamar Medford. So that's, but that's like, if you have that sort of an experience and it doesn't have to be that dramatic, like it can be something like maybe you're very passionate about a board game or a video game, or like I've got clients that are creating brands around their passion for video games, a specific video game, like Fortnite or whatever, and they just are super passionate about it. They have had a journey of going from 
beginner to expert level and they show other people how to do it and they talk about it on their podcast. Like that's how simple this can be. So life experience where it intersects with your current passion, that's the first step. The next step where I'm going to save you a ton of time and effort and frustration and money and energy is you have to understand what pain points your potential audience has and who they are and be as niched niched down, however you want to say it, as, as specific as possible with your messaging, your branding. Uh, like when I start podcasts now, I think like, who is the exact person that I can serve and how specific can I get with them? So like podcasting business school, you know, niching down to just talking to podcasters, that's like a subcategory, but talking to podcasters that are interested in forming a business around their podcast, that's even more specific. So how can you get specific and then even more specific and then understand their pain points, their issues, those, those problems that they have that you can solve, that you can lend your knowledge and energy to do that. The mistake that I made early on was I thought, okay, here's what I want to create. And here's what I think would be cool to create. And I created a whole bunch of stuff that nobody wanted to hear or wanted to buy. And that's, <laughs> uh, so understanding your, who your audience is, how you can serve them, how they want to be served, and then creating content and programs and services around that, that is the key to success in my opinion. Wow, so true, so true. Because <laughs> this this happens where you you are passionate about something like yes, I'll put this out into the world and this and this, and then you know <laughs> it's like nobody is there, yeah. and nobody is buying, and it demotivates you, and you're like, okay, why do I even go about doing this again? Uh, so you know, which brings me to my next question. As you said, you had a couple of misses before that first hit happened. So how did you keep yourself, you know, motivated to keep going? Because after a point, you're like, I put so much effort into this and nobody's here. So crickets. So <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> how, so how did you bring yourself back to continuously creating more uh, content courses, whatever it is? Well, but if I could like pull back the curtain on my Kajabi account and show you all of the courses that are in there, like literally <laughs> close to a hundred. And you, if you go to my website, I, I have like three offers <laughs> that, that are, are <laughs> yeah, that are going, but I'm talking about like paid courses, memberships, coaching programs that I created that nobody wanted. And until I, that, that alarm bell went off my head going, okay, I need to start talking to these people and ask them what they want and have them, you know, help me build it. That's why I'm a big fan of like a, a beta test group or a beta community where they're a part of the creation process. That's been one of the most valuable techniques that I've ever implemented. But early on, I, I'll give you an example. I, I, one of my first memberships I created with my health podcast community, you know, I was just getting things growing and I was like, all right, we need to do a membership or it's going to be $9 a month. I'm going to have thousands of people sign up for this because it's only nine bucks. This is, is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And I created, again, without talking to anyone, I created this monthly process. I put six months of content up in advance so they had something to go through. Uh, we had all these like coaching sessions and all of this stuff. And I had, I think like seven people sign up total. <laughs> so I'm making like, <laughs> like, you know, $60 a month for like 60 hours of work a month. So I'm making a dollar an hour. Um, and I was just like, oh my God gosh, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> this is like <laughs> mind numbing and soul sucking. I'll, I'll, this thing I was super passionate about and I shut it down. I was like, all right, we're going to figure this out. And I went through several different variations of courses and offers until I crossed that line, the light bulb went off and I go, I need, I need to talk to these people and, and have them help me create it. That way I'm creating exactly what they want, surveying people about price points and things like that. Like that's super, super important. And uh, that's uh, what's really served me well moving forward. Okay. So, but how did you, uh, you know, the light bulb went off, but until then, like what even helped you go on to 
you know, doing the next course and the next course and building things. Because 60 hours per month, I mean, that's like a lot of work and that's very disappointing if such. Of course, of course, there's always this thing that those few handful of people who joined like that seven, whatever, I'm sure it changed their lives completely. That is, of course, there. But apart from that, like what kept you going like okay let me do the next thing but this time I'll change my strategy so what even helped you go forward to that next step well that's a very important question I think that I knew a few things to be true one was that what I had to say was important and that what I had to say was impactful because I had seen it I'd seen it myself and I knew and the people with my hometown that I could physically reach and and put them through my processes, how impactful that was, the amazing results. I'm like, I knew it, it, it works. My methods work. They're life changing. Uh, it, they can be pulled off. I just have to figure out the method of delivery. And that, so that's what kept me going. I'm like, I know, I absolutely know this is important information to be putting out there, that this will be a game changer. Like I have a thousand percent confidence in myself and my methods and the way I teach people. So that, that is what kept me going. I just had to say, okay, how it's just the packaging. It's just the process. It's just the method of delivery Mm -hmm. and working with people. I'm a high energy person. And when I get face to face with somebody in person, they feel that and they're much more likely to go, yeah, I'm in, let's go. Or they see all the results that I've produced. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's different when that's a Facebook ad or a podcast that they're listening to. And it's just a different way of communication. It's a longer exposure situation where people will have to hear more shows or uh, like I have a lot of people that sign up for, for weight loss coaching and they've listened to my show for three or four years. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what yeah. took you so long to sign up? Like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just getting this figured out. I'm like, all right. And, and you know, I, I always just wonder like what, what leads to that, them hitting that purchase button. So I always ask and it's, it's interesting, but it just, it's just a longer tale of exposure for people that haven't met you or don't, they don't know, like, or trust you just yet. And maybe it's not, you know, the right time in their life or, or whatever. So we can't always take it personally because there's a lot of variables involved and in the virtual world that we live in, it does, it, we know that it takes many, many more exposures to an offer before somebody does hit that, that purchase button, uh, compared to mm-hmm. what it was even like five years ago. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not, Hey, I mean, if your message is worth it and your goal, it's, it's that why versus why not? Like I have financial goals. I, I have goals for my family. I have extreme confidence in that I can show up and that I can deliver. So to me, it's just, it's just finding the right method of delivery again. And that's just a matter of effort and tweaking and conversations. And I'm willing to put that in because I feel like I can definitely uh, deliver and hit my goal in the long run. So that's, that's what keeps me going. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes so much sense. And, you know, constantly coming back to the why. And I love that you said that, okay, your message is great. You know, you can present it well. So, so it's not, you know, just because somebody didn't come and join a course or, or a community, it didn't uh, make you doubt your content. And that is great. And that is something people need to keep their eye on often and keep remembering often that it's not a reflection on the content they have created if somebody has not come to, uh, you know, enough people have not come to join it uh, yet. I love that. You were talking about how you priced the community at just nine dollars, and you figured, okay, because it's such a low price point. And you know, I again, I think that it comes back to you know, I've heard you speak about this on on your podcast and interviews with others too about how you need to price the right way, how you need to value yourself, and if you don't, others won't, right? <laughs> yeah, and. I found like I started off my career as a personal trainer and, and boot camp instructor and and it was interesting as I I increased my price I became more in demand and it's totally mm-hmm. backwards than what we think like oh it's a great value people will see the value but they you become cheaper in their mind as you drop that price so my my nine dollar offer and I'm putting all this behind it that I thought was a a, a no brainer super easy to say yes to offer 
people were going, ah, this doesn't, this, there must be something wrong with this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, eventually I, I created a membership that worked really well. I made a few different tweaks in what I would, the content I was focusing on and my clients really want accountability. So I included more me time, more check-in calls and things like that, but I elevated the price to $97 a month and we, it was very successful and it, people started signing up. So mm. it, it goes against what every entrepreneur, you know, the way that we think of, we see things in terms of value. A lot of times you're like, this is a, such a huge value that they will not be able to say no to this. Uh, but <laughs> sometimes if you don't respect what you're offering enough to make people pay what it deserves, then it's going to be an unsuccessful effort. And that's a really hard thing to figure out. I've done different techniques. Um, I, the, my latest membership that I launched in the podcasting space, I actually did a tiered launch, which worked really effectively where I said every 10 people that sign up, I'm going to raise the monthly price by $10. Mm. And then as mm. sign up slowed down, that naturally gave me the zone that people were willing to pay in. And mm. that, and I, again, it's, it's kind of letting your community and your ideal clients decide for you instead of me going, it's going to be $3 million a month, you know, or whatever, or $3 a month. Okay. Like who knows, who knows what people are actually willing to pay for this. So that, that's a technique that I was pretty happy with, um, cause now I've got a zone that I know people are willing to, uh, invest in on a monthly basis for this offer. Hmm. Hmm. See, that's so clever. And yeah, you know, how did you even come up with that idea of the tiered thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I, ideas yeah. just come to me in the middle of the night sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, middle of the, yes, <laughs> middle of the night is the time. True, true. Do you get up and start writing it down? Or how do you save these? Because it's coming in the middle of the night. I mean, you, you have kids, you have a family. It's not like you're like up in the middle of the night and running to your office space and typing it all out. So what do you do? How do you, how do you just keep it in your mind and wake up and write them down the next day? I, I, I have a, uh, an Evernote file on my phone where I can just add to it, either do a quick voice, voice note or type something in just so I remember, maybe it's like two or three words, just so I remember what it, it was that I, that I thought of. And then I'll, uh, I'll expand on that in the morning, but something interesting that I've mm -hmm. been doing for a couple of years now that uh, you might be interested in this, your audience might be interested in this. I heard a podcast uh, interview. The guest was a guy named Josh Waitskin, uh, who is, if any of you have seen the movie Searching for Bobby Fisher about a chess prodigy, that is Josh. And I think he was on Tim Ferriss' show, but he was talking about basically employing his subconscious mind to, to work for him overnight while he's asleep. Mm -hmm. And this is a really fascinating technique that I believe has been working. And I've been having more of these types of middle of the night or really fresh minded thinking experiences in the morning. So his little process that he has is he goes, okay, I'm going to work my normal work hours. But then before I close the day, he would do it before dinner time. So he'd work till five and then, you know, dinner and evening and family time is after that. But before he closed the day, he would give his subconscious mind an order of one thing, like a problem to solve or an idea to consider. And he basically kind of place that order of, I have to figure out this. This is something that's very important. I have to find the answer to this question. And then he'd purposely not think about it until the next morning and mm. keep it out of his mind. But he kind of like charges his subconscious mind to focus on this. And then he's like, most of the time the next morning, I have some really good and more clear thoughts on this. So that's, that's an idea that you, you could try. Uh, something that I've been dabbling with a lot more recently. And I, uh, I just love the thought of, you know, our, we understand so little about how our mind works. Like this actually makes sense to me. I'm like this, like if I can yeah. employ my subconscious mind and plant a seed and say, focus on this. Sometimes I have dreams about it. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea or that next morning that just that clearer, like I feel more focused and the clutter has been kind of uh, just brushed away and I can have more clear energy and clear thoughts on that topic. So something to consider. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. And uh, I've seen this thing of just before bed, you put this, if you need to wake up at a certain time in the morning, you just 
tell your subconscious mind like just before bed saying okay wake up at 7 am and then go to sleep and you don't need an alarm and you wake up and it's it's worked with a lot of people but i like this thing of putting an idea and i guess the term you know sleep over this comes from something like this right so exactly. you just put the idea in there and but it's interesting that he does this not just right before bed but many hours before that at, you know when he's closing up work for the day and that's great that gives an even longer stretch of time for it to keep working right in the background that's a, that's very nice yeah i think it would help to be able to do this and know you know after after a point of practicing this you don't have to worry so much because you know something is going to come out of it and then you become a little less stressed about it and then i i guess the process becomes even smoother right <laughs> yeah yeah it becomes a part of your your daily routine just like when i do my affirmations like i really look forward to that that time in the morning and i have a little bit of of coffee and I get the caffeine running through my system and i do some visualization some meditation and i, I read my affirmations and but at the the process at the end of the day is just as important so i think that our our body our body responds and our mind responds and we get into that groove to where it's just a part of the routine and like you said we get more and more efficient with that the more consistent that we implement that you know it's it's funny uh, that you mentioned drinking caffeine before you do the the whole uh, affirmation and everything and normally in a lot of the you know the uh, spiritual uh, all all these uh, what do you say the communities and stuff it's like okay avoid caffeine especially coffee which is very strong and then you know put in your meditation time and what not and it's so funny so i I don't drink coffee every day. I drink it once in a day while I'm more of a tea person. But when I do drink coffee, I actually like to sit down and meditate after that. I feel good. I feel and I always thought I was the odd one out. <laughs> like, you know, it's kind of weird like it it goes against what is usually told about drinking coffee. Your mind is too jittery so you're not able to focus, but it helps me actually meditate better. So you know i was smiling wide when you're like okay i get caffeine into my system and start doing my affirmations <laughs> well, to me i feel like a trained mind is enhanced by caffeine or stimulants and things like that where we have that muscle built up where i'm not going to get you know monkey mind scatterbrained because i put in my reps with my meditation every single day like i use my headspace app um, yeah. every, every day, every morning. And so my mind is trained in so that the caffeine, the stimul, the stimulation, uh, just, it just makes me more awake. But with that awake feeling, I'm able to focus on what I'm doing in the moment instead of being, you know, all over the place. So I think it's more of whether your mind is trained in on that process or not. And if you, if you are, uh, a, a, uh, meditation veteran that's been doing it for a while i think you'll be fine with a little bit of stimulation in your system <laughs> so true so true and it makes me feel good to to hear what you said because it's more about normally it would be something where someone might pass judgment on it i would never share this with my <laughs> spiritual <laughs> you know folks like i drink coffee and meditate like <laughs> that just doesn't <laughs> I, I'd be like, oh, oh, I'm going to be judged for this. But when you put it this way, like, yeah, you know, you can't judge me. I'm trained. <laughs> yeah. I'm at a higher space. That's why I'm able to take in caffeine and use it to my benefit. <laughs> yeah, it's the same as like in the in the United States and in Canada. I know like the ayahuasca experience is very big, and it's usually utilizing a foreign substance and in you know ingesting it in our body and then building momentum off of what that produces so you know caffeine is nowhere near you know you're not like having hallucinations or, or anything <laughs> like that but it's just a, a tamed down version of that like we're ingesting something but if you're if you have you know panic attacks and you do ayahuasca that may not like go well um <laughs> yeah. if you are stressed out and anxious and you're on caffeine that's probably not going to help anything so it's more mm -hmm. about the overall circumstances and you have to understand what the substance that you're putting in your body is capable of and whether you're in a good space to handle that or not mm, that that makes a lot of sense yeah so adam before we you know wind up for the day 
it's been great like there's so much information here that has been packed into the show and i'm not at all surprised because i know you know you are a teacher by nature you have all these awesome ideas so i knew that there's going to be a lot to learn for my audience when they listen to your interview and it totally matched up to what i was expecting but before we wind up is there anything else you'd like to share and also you know how can people uh, get in touch with you Yes, well, again, thank you for sharing your platform with me, Miss Veganosaurus, my favorite podcasting okay. name by far, by the way. Like it's it's so <laughs> it's such a like powerful and vicious name that is 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 delivered by the like the sweetest individual that I've ever met on, in the podcasting space. So, that's why I love it so much. Uh so every time I'm I'm able to be on a platform like this, I love to put out what I call my implementation alarm challenge. So with your audience, um, I'm a veteran podcaster and I know that podcast listeners are here for entertainment, but we also want you to, to get benefit and take action. So I have this implementation alarm challenge where I know 99% of you are listening on your phone and on your phone, 99% of you have an alarm. So what I'd like you to do is set your alarm for 24 hours from right now when you're currently listening to this so as soon as the recording's over go to your alarm set it for 24 hours from right now and your challenge from me to you is if we discussed one point or if we gave you one idea even if it's just having something by your bed to make notes on or you know the, the josh waitskin idea about your subconscious mind or anything if you got any sort of actionable idea i want you to take action on that before the alarm goes off that's the implementation alarm challenge. And what happens, just so I'll, I'll warn you, is you'll set your alarm, you'll go about your day, you'll totally forget about it. And then in 24 hours, your phone starts ringing, the alarm goes off and you're going, why is my alarm going off at 237 in the <laughs> afternoon? And then you go, Adam, and you'll, you'll just do something right then. So when the alarm goes off, just do something. Maybe you had an idea and you just need to, um, like, read a book or you, a reminder to reach out to a friend or make a couple notes in your journal, anything. You don't have to completely solve a problem, just put in action towards, it's kind of like uh, flicking over that first domino to create a chain reaction. So do that in the next 24 hours. And I think that you will uh, definitely benefit from that. And then as far as you know, connecting with me, my main hub right now is uh, my website, podcastingbusiness.school. And I'm at Podcasting Business School on Instagram. If you guys are uh, podcasters or pod curious, that's a great place to hang out and I can definitely help you out. Awesome. Awesome, Adam. And uh, thank you so much. And I love the challenge. I'm, I'm like, so first of all, while you were talking, I almost, you know, grabbed my notebook and made notes, but I'm like, no, no, I'm the host. I cannot be carried <laughs> away. <laughs> I got to be asking the questions. Uh, but uh, I like this whole 24-hour uh, implementation idea. Um, it's uh, almost 10 p.m. for me in the night. So maybe like 23 hours, I'll set <laughs> an alarm and, you know, let me figure out what I would implement from uh, what you have uh, taught. And then I'm going to uh, message you on your Instagram and let you know. <laughs> and I hope everybody who's listening, you do that too. You know, get in touch with me, get in touch with Adam. Uh, tell us what you implemented and, uh, you know, how, how whatever Adam has shared today helps you or rather inspires you to take action. Thank you so much, Adam. It was lovely chatting with you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Wasn't that an awesome episode? I hope you learned quite a bit out of it and have a lot of new ideas now running in your mind. If you're a podcaster, then I highly recommend joining Adam's Podcasting Business Builders Course Bundle. This is a set of courses that Adam has built to help you with your podcast business. It's about taking your podcast and turning it into a business. It includes building a lead magnet to building a podcast business and all of it step by step, Adam has explained it so well. I've shared a link to the course in the show notes. Check it out and um, you know I, I highly recommend that you join it if you're a podcaster because it is of great value and as I already mentioned, Adam is an excellent uh, teacher. 
Also visit my site veganosaurus.com that is www.veganosaurus.com and scroll down to the bottom and subscribe to my feel good tribe mailing list on my mailing list i share many things about my life which i don't share anywhere else neither on social media nor on my podcast it's like having a close group of friends for me whoever's on my mailing list I cherish having them there. I also share links to content by other great creators. All the content that inspires me, I speak about it on my newsletter. It comes in maybe once a week or once in two weeks or so. It's not a very regular thing, but with every mail, I try to add a lot of value to the readers. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the Feel Good Tribe. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Feel Good Factor. I'm Susmita Veganosaurus and I'm looking forward to talking to you again very soon. Bye.